Here at Redacted, we believe in free speech. We understand that free speech has to protect even the speech that you do not like. And without that, you don't have it. Uh, But some people really don't understand that. In the age of cancel culture, some people think that speech they don't like should be deplatformed, not allowed. How did we get to this point? Uh, Now, Cambridge University is offering free speech training on campus to help students understand that free speech is actually fundamental to a free society. This is unequivocal. We must all agree that free speech is important, but many people don't. The lectures will be offered by this guy. He's a philosophy professor named Arif Ahmed. Now he is in trouble because he invited author Helen Joyce to speak at the campus last week. I followed this event because I have only just finished her groundbreaking book called Trans. It is hotly contested and many said that even allowing her to present is hateful. Um, Many protested her very presence on campus and in the run up to the event. Don't you like the tolerance, right? Here's that we're inviting her here to present her research. To, to listen to her research. Yes. And that's considered hateful. Yes. Um, in fact, the, the college master emailed the entire student body in the run up to the event saying that she was going to boycott the event because she considered Joyce's writing insulting and hateful. Um, now, Joyce responded to her in an email and said, did you even read my book? Which she never responded to. Um, I have to believe that she did not read that book because it is not insulting or hateful. She is a fierce advocate for women's safety, which is something that gets swept under the rug a lot in the trans movement and gay rights. And she believes that the trans movement is dangerous and exclusionary. And I have presented her ideas so many times on this show. Um, So the event took place. It did, in fact, happen under increased security. And at the last minute, they said they had so much interest that they had to sell tickets when originally it was supposed to be a free event. Um, And it did prevent a lot of people from getting in. It caused confusion. They changed the venue. It was like, yes, we're going for this. But they continued to put roadblock in front of in in, ahead of roadblock. Oh, so no, nobody in front of her. Nobody wants to show up and we can't have her here. And people were afraid to walk in. They did something where they had to like make it so that you can go into this speech without being heckled. Um, it was like, it ended up being a big event. Now the college master who I spoke about Pippa Rogerson, um, you know, she, uh, she sent this email to the student body because she was getting so much flack from LGBT groups on campus. And these groups said that they unanimously were disgusted by the platforming of such views. I, I'm offended by the idea of the word platforming. Like we, you have views I don't like, and you must not have a platform. Meaning views you don't like should not even get a book. They shouldn't get a Twitter account. They shouldn't get a place to speak ideas that you don't like. Um, Rogerson again said that she would let the event go ahead in the name of free speech, but she would boycott by not attending, which is just so immature for an academic. She's a leader at an academic institution who doesn't like a set of ideas. So throws a tantrum, like wouldn't a, Upstanding well, academics show up and yes. debate those ideas instead of thought bombing them in advance. Yes, exactly. Because if you're going to invite her there on under the auspices of free speech, but then I'm going to boycott it before I've listened to the speech. And I'm going to dump on you right. in advance. I'm going to tell everyone I hate these ideas and I won't go. But go ahead. You know, uh, this well, is co- I think this has so to do immature. A lot with the- it really is. And, and this, there's a narrative out there. I mean, people are convinced that free speech is bad. I did a poll over the weekend out of 77,000 votes. I said, are you a free speech purist or do you think some speech should be censored? We had 83% purist, 15% mild censorship is okay. 1% censor at all. And 1% I trust the government to decide. Oh, okay. Interesting. It must be so the 1%. That's kind of a big number. 15% is crazy. I mean, when you think about it um, and again, yeah. You know, if you have censorship around things like, you know, go and do this bad thing to this person. Yeah. Right? We all agree. Right. You don't do that. You're inciting someone to violence. Right. Right. We, but we, we all agreed that Chrissy Teigen can do that around the Black Lives Matter riots. She said on Twitter that anyone who, you know, goes and gets in trouble, I'll pay your legal bills. And right. so those people went and actually vandalized and stole 
and she was the, she was inciting violence, but she's not deplatformed for that. She was deplatformed for being rude to somebody, right? But not for this. That's the thing that she got deplatformed for, or she got in trouble for it. She had to apologize for it, but not but not that. Go go burn and loot some buildings. Yes, and I will pay your legal fees. She, she said. Um, so you know this is the, the that can have a platform, but not this. Um, now, in fact. What happened is that Joyce did show up and give her a speech. Some people did show up and actually debated her and she addressed them. That takes courage. But most others who protested this and were and protested the event even happening, they actually stood outside and they banged drums and chanted in order to drown out her talk. So that was their goal is let's go there and not even let the people who show up hear her words. And in fact, there's video footage that shows that they could hear the drums while she was speaking, but she had a little thing called a microphone and <laughs> was, you know, able, able to, to yes. Yeah. Um, you know, this is not maturity. You have to think about the no debate hashtag that what? trends around these issues. You can't debate, right? We can't talk well, about putting children on harmful gonna... pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Yeah, you're just scared you're going to hear some words and all of a sudden it's going to be like, oh, wow, I never thought of that. Oh, no, I'm going to I'm changing sides. Oh, no. New yeah. I, well, they use this this idea that it's harmful to people and it will make them hurt themselves more. And I am not going to discuss that on this platform because of what is and is not allowed. Um, I encourage you to read the book. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but you know, again, this is equivalent to just putting your hands over your ears while someone's trying to have a mature discussion with you. Well, um, also, if you know, you have, kids do that. It's like the parents thing, right? Oh, you can't know. You're not allowed to go and watch that show. You're not allowed to watch that show. To, 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 when you tell kids not to do something, they're going to be in. Oh, why is everyone really? They're protesting these people. I, maybe I do want to hear what they I have to say. I don't think that is the effect that this will have because people are legitimately afraid. Like what I just said, the data that I am not sharing with you about whether or not this endangers trans people, I'm afraid to say it because of the consequences. And so many people who might have a, a, an idea that more aligns with JK Rowling than these um, groups might be afraid to show up. In fact, a lot of people are afraid to say this. Hmm. There's a lot of things I'm afraid to say that I would very much like to say about this kind of stuff. And I am dancing along the edges of what I think is allowed on these platforms. So I don't think at all it's like, don't look there. And then someone wants to look there. I think that the intimidation is quite effective. Sad. I mean, look, I mean, yeah, we'd like to keep our show, you know, and that's the thing that these, you can get shut down for it, you know, yeah, canceled, shut down. And many now are even saying that this professor Ahmed should be punished for putting that event on. Um, the students are calling for the university and saying, what consequences is he going to get? They, they didn't read the book. They didn't show up and listen. They didn't have a real debate, but they want him to be punished. So, um, in fact, he is taken to giving free speech classes. Uh, it's a back to basics moment in history where somehow the illiberal left has decided that you should not even hear what they disagree with. So his classes are going to focus on John Locke and John Milton and introduce this idea of what he calls, this is interesting, the rise of new Puritan Puritanism, um, where being offended can be deemed an offense. Uh, you may not like to hear this, but I have the right to offend you. That is my right in a free society. Um, and this new Puritanism doesn't even want other people to have the opportunity to be offended. You can't listen to what you don't like. This is so egocentric and pig headed. Well, and also did, there's so many levels. It's like one thing that would offend you won't offend me and, and vice versa. It's like, then you, you, do you have to go down to the little minute, you know, once it starts, once you go down this road, where does it stop? Yeah. I mean, there, there are, I think nine levels of, of non-protected speech. Um, but just things you don't like is not one of them. And in fact, Tucker Carlson last night on his show pointed out hate speech is not protected speech. You are allowed to say things that I hate 
that is allowed. And I have to defend your right to say them. And then I have to choose how I react. That's what freedom is. And so if you say something I hate, like Twilight is like Harry Potter, that really pisses me off. Uh, then I have the right to no longer consume your whatever that is. Right. But right. you should be able to say it. Even if you are, if you say that you're a stupid person, but would we make you know, the movie? The, what was the Larry Flint movie? Like Larry Flint versus the people. Remember that movie or people, people versus, versus Larry, Larry Flint? Flint? Yeah. Like we wouldn't even be able to make a movie like that anymore these days. Right. Cause that movie was all about like, it's protecting speech. You don't like, you don't have to, you know, but that I, I didn't see the movie, but I know the case from, um, just studying media in, in university, yeah. but it, that's about whether prurient speech is protected. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know the exact details of what exact speech. That's not what this is, but, but it doesn't matter, right? It's speech you don't like, and it's still protected. That's the, the very heart of our constitution. Yes. And so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. Yeah. It's protected. Right. Well, I think about the enlightenment and the enlightenment movement was about resting narrative control away from government and church. And like, let me read my own book. Let me think about what I want. Let's, you know, the, let's meet in French cafes and have open academic discussions and disagree loudly over our croissant. Right. And this is no longer allowed. Mm -hmm. If you couple this with the story we just did on the DHS, that they're literally removing you from public spaces via the internet. Um, and then if you want to go to this in real life event, you are intimidated and the founders are, they're, they're calling for their head of who even puts it on. And so it's like, we need, we need desperately the enlightenment 2.0 era hmm. and government doesn't want it. And we will have to fight over it. It is a Les Miserables movement. And it is, we're coming, you know, this is the fourth turning. We talked about it, right? This 80 years of cleansing every 80 years. And this yeah. is what Strauss writes about in the fourth turning. Like we are now at the fourth turning, you know, and this is a, a cleansing moment. So this is like a, an uprising, a cleansing moment yeah. to throw off the shackles of these governments that are telling us to, you know, and this is the thing, as Thomas Jefferson spoke about, the people should never fear their government. Government should always fear its people. Yeah. And we are not in that situation. I mean, right now, no, no, no. We fear our government, right? That's a sad place to be. Yeah. And we need that when he says that, when that occurs, it's time to throw off the shackles of that government. Well, the problem is, you know, okay, we, we see the need for a free speech class, but who's going to show up? Not these people who are banging drums trying to, you know, right. drown out the noise. Certainly not those who are saying bye to Twitter because of Elon Musk. Like, who's going to go are people who maybe are already more prone to. So, like, it. I don't know. If I were faculty, I'd mandate it for, I'd, I'd mandate free speech classes um, for all degree. Or mm. especially for, I don't know, I, you weave this into your curriculum, something, right? Um because one or two free speech should. lectures, it's not going to do much good. I agree with mandating that if they also put into that the, pa the left lane is for passing only. Like add that in there. and. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know if that's true well, you can't in do the that UK. In, not in California. Well, oh. Yeah. I, I think in the UK oh. you pass on the right. Uh, well, I don't know because they drive on the wrong side of the road in the UK. But um, uh, that's true. But in California, they don't know how to drive. So they, when you drive in the left lane in California, there's no, like, it's awful. When I, when I first moved to California, I was like, what is going on here? You like people just, they, they pass on the right. There's no, it's a chaos. That's an unforced error. You don't need to take it's that chaos. swipe at California. I do. I don't live there anymore. And neither do you. You moved out of that hell hole. Yeah, I, sometimes I think Clayton just takes swipes at California because I'm from there and he likes how that feels. Um, I'm from and Philadelphia and I, I make fun of Philadelphia all the time. You so. didn't need to take that swipe on, on California, but, unforced uh, errors, yeah. but yeah, we don't. Someone said right. that someone, uh, super chat just said, uh, if, if we didn't have free speech, we'd all think the world was still flat. Yeah. You know, think about the people that spoke out, right. You know, the people that actually spoke yes, out about the world. but they were deplatformed. Well, well, like Galileo. That's, that's yeah. the, that's the thing. And like the, the problem I have with this, especially being like on a college campus is like academics and academia in general is based on the idea of evidence and then counter evidence. 
And so if you're not allowing yeah. somebody to pre present evidence, like the way that process works is somebody did their research, they present their research, and then it's open for debate. If that research holds up under questioning, then that is evidence towards what they're saying as being true. Yeah. If that if evidence falls apart under counter evidence, then that is evidence that it shows it is, you know, likely false. That's the process that's supposed to be in place. Not yeah. just shut up the person that you don't like their evidence because research is research. Right. Evidence is evidence. Yeah. And a lot of what she promotes is single space places for biological women because in to make it safer. Um, and, you know, this is something that's hotly contested, but she has a lot of data. Um, and that is something that they don't even want to debate, not even a little bit. Um, and again, thus the hashtag no debate uh, that trends around this issue. Chris Springer, thank you so much. She says you two are horrible for saying thanks for donations. I just sent so much. Not again. <laughs> thank you, horrible. Chris. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Thank you. Very kind of you. Smoke and Joe says, are you guys going to stay on Twitter or get off now that Elon is a part of it? Well, now thoughts, the news Joe? tonight is that he does intend to charge $8 a month for verification or blue check. Um, and, uh, you know, I like Twitter. I'm going to stick around. How else uh, yeah, am I, I going to see what uh, other people are saying that they have the right to say that pisses me off all the time? Right. I mean, this is the beauty of it, right? It's it's supposed to be a town square where people can... I just hope we get rid of anonymous uh, anonymous tweeting. Mm. Like, have to put your own name behind your own tweets. Yeah. You know, don't put some random account where you can just attack somebody like that. No one wants to see that. But the, And the other beauty of Twitter is that you have the ability to moderate yourself and censor what you see, what you don't see. You right. know, uh, that doesn't mean well, I have to walk out argument. Every platform does that. There's a block button. If you if you want to create your own echo chamber, all you have to do is block everyone mm -hmm. you don't want to listen to. And you've got your own Twitter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have my lists. I create my own Twitter lists that I uh, there's people that I follow. So I go to my sort of lists and I check like what certain journalists that I have a lot of respect for. And I and I follow. Uh, so I have my own sort of curated feed and I can see what's what's actual real news. Like I don't follow like the New York Times and bullshit stuff like that. I follow actual <laughs> independent journalists. And so I have my own curated lists and you can create moderation for yourself to protect yourself. If you don't want to read about uh, certain things and you can block that, you know. Yeah, um, you can, you know, you can do that. So cool. Well, we've got All more. right. Well, let us know what you think. If you think that free speech training is a positive movement towards what I'm calling the Enlightenment 2.0. Let's let's ha let's hashtag that Enlightenment yeah. 2.0 means stop letting people tell you what to think.